can't help but think about the Larry Fink letters, you know, everybody's yeah. last year's and this year's. And um, do you, is there an aspiration that Future Fit could really, I, you you do work with investors, yes, right? I do. Um, yeah. Well, t- just say a few words about that and maybe what your hope would be given what Larry Fink is talking about and how Future Fit could fit into that. Yeah, so we do, um, similar to the Development Council that you sat on, uh, Amy, there are investor members um, and they have been very active in helping us shape this disclosure approach um, and sort of the whole notion of concise, comparable, credible really came off the back of asking investors what they want and what they need. Um, so everything that we're doing now is to try and prepare the market for the you know, hopeful influx of, of future fit data, you know, in the next couple of years. Um, more specifically, um, there's two things just to point out. One is, is we're nearing completion when, on a project with a, a large global bank that has um, identified the critical high, medium and low goals for 109 sectors um, across the business benchmark. Yeah, so it's, it's quite exciting. <laughs> it's, it's, it's exciting. Um, so that project is actually wrapping up this week. Uh, and we've got a little bit of sort of rationalizing to do and a little bit of like work to do behind the scenes. But in terms of those initial categorizations, um, that's done. And that bank in particular is going to start using those uh, sector heat maps um, to start to analyze businesses in their portfolio, but also... Um, to start to make investment decisions. Uh, so lending decisions. So they're gonna start tying their lending through to what business is doing to address these critical high, medium and low goals, which is, I mean, it's the holy grail for us. It's, it's actually showing that investment decisions are moving um, based on, on your progress against uh, extra financial issues. So that's one thing that is, is really exciting, um, hugely exciting for us. The other sort of, and, and I was going to say, in terms of investors more, the other point is actually, so some of those investors on our development council members, um, on our development council have also done sort of portfolio assessments. So not necessarily using the heat maps, but using, um, taking companies within their sort of, uh, growth portfolios, 40 to 50 companies have started to do their own assessments as to where are the potential hotspots or blind spots um, that they're not aware of in terms of what the critical issues are going to be for their companies. So that's on a little bit sort of smaller level and looking on a, a portfolio or a fund basis. Um, but again, it starts to show how this information can be used and just at least at its sort of very core, how the benchmark can be used to start to drive decision making. Longer term, what we hope to do is um, some kind of freemium model with these heat maps uh, to be able to provide a little bit of information to investors and then say, if you want all of it, you know, come and buy it, uh, which will, will help us keep the lights on because we are a charity. Um, but we think there's... <sighs> we think there's a lot of value in what we've done because up to now, a lot of the organizations that have done this um, haven't necessarily used the best methods of capturing data. Um, So if you look at ratings and rankings organizations, they're sort of slightly different, but if you look at like the morning stars and some of the other data grabbers, um, there's not a lot of conversation between what they grab and the businesses themselves. So we've got these heat maps to start with. Businesses will be able to respond to say, yes, that's correct because we've done ABC or B, that's not correct because you know, we're doing this and this and this. And this is why it aligns with our business model. This is why it doesn't align with our business model. So all of a sudden we've got a conversation between business, ourselves, investors, um, and just sort of the flow of, of real information I think is, is most exciting. So talk about an ecosystem. I mean, this is really threading everything together. Finally, you know, things are not happening. Well, there's aspiration that things won't be happening in silos, that there's a real chance for this, for this species to um, have a future on this planet. um, Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's taken, it's taken a few years. Um, Jeff and Martin, kick this all off I think seven or eight years ago I've been on board for four years um, and it's only in the last sort of year to two years that we've really felt this surge of momentum and we are still like not to you know to be sure we're very small still we're very small um, 
but some of the people that we're working with now in this this bank, I think, will be announced all in good time. And it's it's surprising because <laughs> the size of some of these organizations who want to work with us, it's it's really humbling. Um, and for my mind, and I think from a you know, for the rest of the team's mind, it means that we're onto something. Um, it means that we're onto something interesting and, and new and novel and that, you know, the approach we've taken hasn't been seen before. And that's why we're starting to gain the, the, the notoriety and the traction that we're gaining. So it is, it's exciting times.